Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. Oh, check out the shirt, check out the shirt. Oh, it's Matrix style, it's like going to greatness, like the eagles flying up, like with the G and M code dropping down in the back. It says rise to greatness. You, th you guys think I'm plugging my shirt, but it's, it's more than that, right? I'm plugging my shirt. You can buy this shirt and support free education for CAD, CAM, and CNC at the academy.titansofcnc.com. But it's more than that. The movie, The Matrix, like I used to love setting up my speakers and listening to the bullets falling and just ching, ching, ching. The Matrix, one of my favorite movies. But you know, there, there's a point behind the movie. So Morpheus understands the real world and he is actually looking at Neil, who's the chosen one. And Neil's like, Morpheus, I know what you're trying to do. And he's like, Neil, I'm trying to free your mind and so you, that you can see beyond the walls what the truth is. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do in a different way. I've been in this trade for a long time. So when you see the cover photo for this video and it says machining fast, you have it wrong. What I'm talking about is like, there's a lot of people out there. There's some people that just get it right they just get it they get productivity they get this trade they're doing big things and and if that's you just keep doing what you're doing right but there's a lot of other people that they watch part of my videos a lot of the videos and they come back and they're like oh you're gonna break the machine titan you're running too fast and oh poor ball screws and oh poor table and poor machine and titan you're abusing you're abusing you're abusing and all this and there's so many of them i don't even respond but i thought you know what why not today actually come in and actually like do a video so that I can talk to you guys about the mental game and what I'm actually trying to do, right? So going through 08 and 09 and watching 50,000 companies like drop out just in the United States alone, you know, go out of business and stuff. I started looking around and seeing like, man, like everybody's in their boxes and they don't talk to each other. Everybody's competing over scraps, right? And they just don't know. And how they machine, you know, the principles that they use and the techniques that they use is based on their experiences. And if they've worked at massive shops and around great people, then they're going to take all of that at their own and they're going to be great. But there's a lot of companies that have been running on the side in the box for 20 plus years and they've never seen like high productivity right so my vision here you know is is not about just destroying metal right i mean i like murdering some metal i like murdering some metal man. making some chips right but but that's not what it's about it's about going to the people who haven't seen productivity on a high level and showing them new tools showing them productivity showing them different techniques knowing that if they have this whole like lifetime of like skills like bottled up and that's that's their experience that maybe they can just add a few more and take all of it to greatness right so there's some different videos that i put out one is the 800 inches per minute speed test where i took a can of metal shell mill and just started at 100 inches a minute 200 300 400 500 600 700 oh like I stopped it and then I backed off it and then I started again boom 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 got up to 800 right and it was like just wow boom it was like awesome and a lot of people were like you can't run the machine like that and what's your service finish is going to be like and and telling you ruining the machine and tight but then they didn't stay for the ending and what the ending was was basically me saying look like there's a lot of people out there that are running at 100 inches a minute and they run that every single day and they used to run at 50 so now they feel confident that they're actually running faster so i didn't want to tell you like run at 800 every day on every single part but I, what i wanted to show you was like the tool didn't break the tool's still there the inserts are still there right and if we actually look at our spindle load and we look at the machine we can actually like look at and gauge it 
and then we can back off and we can actually find that sweet spot. So I showed on that particular machine, I was like, all right, we got all the way up here, but we came back down. And now if you actually run this tool at 300 to 350 inches per minute, you will be successful and you can bank it. So long you have a rigid setup, 300 to 350, that's this tool, that spindle, document it, and every time that you're actually roughing the bottom of material or roughing material around with that shell mill, don't reinvent the wheel, use this. And then make sure that everybody else who's programming and running these machines, that they run at those same specs, all right? Because that's gold, that's money in the bank right there. And people say, well, I don't wanna run that hard. It's not hard. It's, it's not hard, like jump up, pull back, make that law. You gotta understand, these machines can actually run way faster than the parameters that they set or the limits that they set, you know what I mean? So we have to understand that this is a machine, it makes us money, and that we need to actually do a solid job for our customers by pushing them to their limits, backing off, finding that sweet spot, that is productivity so that we can actually give our customers parts at a lower price and therefore help them be successful, which helps us be successful, right? I don't know if all that made sense, but that's the whole thing right there. So another video that I did was the Ken tip video, right? Where I was like, king of all modulars, speed test, and I basically went boom, 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 all the way up to like 40 inches a minute, like boom, and just like, just showing like at 40 inches a minute, like it just shoved right through the 316, had no problems at all. But at the end of the video, I back off. I basically said, look, we went over here, then we went all the way up here, over 500 service foot, but we're gonna come back and we're gonna land right here, okay? So your sweet spot is between 200 surface foot and 375 surface foot, okay? And then 0.007 to 0.011 inches per rev. So if you're running 316 stainless, you can understand that this is your wheelhouse. This is your sweet spot. All right, so again, it's never about destroying machines or destroying tools. It's just pushing the limits, coming back, finding that sweet spot, documenting that sweet spot so we can actually have good productivity and make money while we save money for our customers. All right, so another thing I wanna point on is that you don't always run fast. You know, there's a time for roughing and there's a time for kissing right there's a time for like getting after it and murdering and dropping chips on the ground and against that back wall machine gunning it and there's a time to come back and just kiss that baby right so there's a lot of variables in manufacturing and stuff so when we have a massive piece of material whether it be aluminum titanium or ink canal in that vice or in that fixture our number one goal starting out is to hold it rigid, have a nice rigid tool, have a good understanding of the entire process, and then get as much material off that block in the shortest amount of time, okay? So we get after it at the beginning, we rough, 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 hold it tight, rough, 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 and then all of a sudden, boom, just relax, relax, grab, grab onto that part, not putting too much pressure on it, and then we slow down that spindle, and then we slow down the feed, and we just come in and kiss it, right? We just come in and kiss it. So there's a time to rough, and there's a time to kiss. I say like kiss the baby, it's my joke, right? It's like you're running through the house, like boom, 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 you're just making things happen, and all of a sudden you run out, you're like, oh, you run back to mama, and you're like, and she's holding the baby, and you like cut, slow down, and you just, oh, you kiss the baby, kiss the baby, and then you run outside, right? There's a time and a place for like raw, and there's a time where you come back and just kiss in those tents right? Kiss in those specs, go off those datums, just make everything absolutely perfect, right? So we take pride in roughing and we take pride in hitting that tolerance perfect, 
All right, so I think you guys are getting what I'm throwing down, right? Let's figure out all the tools that help us succeed. Let's push them to their limits and then back off and find the sweet spot. Let's document it so we're not reinventing the wheel and then find out what the best tool is per application, all right? You know, I wanna point out a couple of videos. You guys have seen Machining Titan's Titanium Lion. It's a beast of a video, like just the workmanship in how the video was filmed and everything was crazy. And then we took off over a hundred pounds of titanium to actually machine this lion. And people were like, man, look, I make real parts. You're making lines. I'm like, dude, I'm like inspiring kids and I'm, and I'm giving teachers and counselors something to show parents, to show them how awesome this industry is so kids can get excited about it. But at the same time, I'm roughing a hundred pounds of titanium off a big old block. And then I'm giving you the surface foot. I'm giving you the chip load. I'm talking about how, you know, in the machinist handbook, it tells you 175 surface foot, but we're actually doing tricordial milling. We're actually going full depth with a lighter radial, right? But our MRR is actually increased and we're just getting after it. So we're at 400 surface foot, we're at a point zero zero five two. We're documenting it, putting it all there on the screen. So when you look at the lion video, look at it for the artistry, but then come back and look at how we write out all the tools, the exact tools, the exact surface foot, the exact chip load. That's stuff that takes machinists a lifetime to discover, right? That's not written in anything. Like those are tried and tested methods that I personally and my team use when we machine aerospace parts. And we're giving you that information. We're giving it to you because we want you guys to be successful because we want you to compete. We want you to hire people and you to just take the industry to a high level, right? And these kids, why reinvent the wheel? Let them come in, show them how to do it, show them how to make parts, show them how to program, give them, give them the ingredients so that they can do the cooking, right? And then allow them to go and take it to a higher level. If you don't give our kids and the next generation all the information, then they're going to have to reinvent and spend a lifetime trying to figure out you know, how to get to where we are now. Let's lift them up to where we are now so that they can go beyond where we could ever go because they're, they're younger and they, the technology is going to allow them to do incredible things, right? Another video I wanna quickly mention is Masterclass, right? Machining Inconel 625, where we took the Titan 1M, we expanded it, boom, and we actually just, I went through the process, just as an experienced machinist who does this every day, I just went through the process. I said, this is the tool, this is how we're gonna face it. Before we use an end mill, we're gonna come and pre-drill it because I don't want a helical, right, into Inconel 625. I wanna just drop into a hole that's pre-existing. So this, this is the speeds and feeds. This is the speeds and feeds. This is how we're gonna attack it. Boom, 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 boom. Give you all the surface foot, the chip load, depth of cut, and basically everything. So look at the tools, look at the surface foot, look at the chip load, document it. So when you have a job that's Inconel, you can say, I'm either running at this or above it, right? But you have something to bounce your numbers off of, okay? We're teaching you. Now, nobody's teaching this, the Inconel. Nobody's teaching the Monel, the Hastelloy, the A286. That's where we're going with our five axis series, our aerospace series. We're teaching you that so that you guys can actually go get work with SpaceX and Blue Origin and Aerojet and be successful because a lot of companies are stepping up and they're all failing because there's nobody teaching. There's nobody teaching this stuff, all right? So look at the picture. You guys see my son. That's my son Tyson right there. And he's holding this big old titanium king. So this is another video tutorial coming out on Thursday and it is on machining the titanium king right and it's amazing it's an amazing video like look at what we're doing here we're trying to free your mind we're trying to like like allow you to see it 
so that you can take it all to greatness and go up and give you the ingredients, right? So Tyson machines this king. The techniques are the same that we use in aerospace. I say aerospace because we do a lot of aerospace work, but everything, everything is underneath it in comparison. So if you can do aerospace work, you can basically do anything because it's so rigid, it has to be so perfect. Every, you have to have the best tools, the best techniques, and you gotta have a lot of experience, right? So Tyson actually goes into the DMG Mori NLX 2500. He puts in 10 different tools right he tells you every single tool he tells you every single depth of cut he tells you the 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 feed rate the surface foot he gives you everything and explains the entire process and shows you how to machine that king and when you look at how intricate the cross is when you look at how intricate all of it is those are the same techniques you use for difficult aerospace parts all right this is a video coming out on Thursday. I can't stress it enough. This isn't just about YouTube and just watching something cool. This is about knowledge and wisdom. So when you bank that information and you, you take this book, you guys should have like a book and say like Titans of CNC and you open it up. You're like machining aluminum, machining ink, you know, machining 316 stainless, machining Hasteloid and just start documenting. This is the tool. This is a service foot. This is a chip load. This is the depth of cut. This is axial radial, all that. Right. And just start loading it in. And then when you see other great things, start loading it in. Okay, so when you have the opportunity to actually machine an amazing part, you can actually like step up, look at your notes, right? And program that thing efficiently and know that you're on par, that you're taking it to greatness, that your price, that your productivity, your tool life, everything is gonna be supreme, all right? Anyway, oh, it's like a song, right? There's a time to rough it, there's a time to kiss it, there's a time to rough it, there's a time to murder it, there's a time to rock, like, oh, machine gun, do, 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 do. chips against the back wall, and there's a time to come back and kiss that baby, right? Mmm, I know, I know, I'm a little crazy, but I'm passionate, I love this trade, I wanna lift you guys up, I wanna free your mind, like the Matrix. See you on the next vlog, boom, I'm out. Oh.